What's up, guys? Hey, welcome to week one of our brand new series called Headline. Uh, man, I know this is a weird venue or outlet to come to you guys, but maybe you're used to it by now since you've been doing schoolwork uh, via your computers this whole week. And so I uh, hope you're doing well, man. Uh, I'm excited about what these table groups are going to look like uh, online like this. And so, uh, of course, uh, you guys know that headlines are the main topic of a news article, right? And so, uh, and if there was a news and media in Jesus's day, you can imagine he probably would have made a couple headlines. And so let's play a little trivia and see if you guys can guess these Bible stories based on their headlines. Water fell from the sky for the first time. Result killed the planet except for those on a boat. Well, that's Noah, right? Uh, at Nile split from an old man's staff. Largest army in the world drowned. Wow. Wow. That's Moses, right? Moses in the Red Sea. A sheep boy kills giant military hero. David and Goliath, right? That's an easy one. So Jesus said and did some things that would definitely be headline worthy too, right? So giving blind men sight, feeding tens of thousands of people might get a line from Fox now, don't you think? And so in Mark chapter four, go ahead and flip your Bibles open there. Jesus is preaching his famous Sermon on the Mount, right? Amazing parables and instructions, one right after the other. And so Jesus is talking about not hiding your faith, relating it to hiding a lamp under a basket. He spoke to the gospel that grows within the believer until they're prompted to make a decision and that it's not instantaneous. Uh, and, and then he gets to this illustration about the kingdom of God being equatable to a mustard seed. That it's small and simple to begin with, but the size and depth when God's truth takes root is immense. And so then I love this part because uh, we can all relate to it, right? In Mark chapter 4, verse 33, Jesus says, With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them without a parable, but privately to his own disciples, he explained everything. Right, and I, if I was, I was this group, right, I'd kind of wish I was the disciples and I'm able to. It's like, hey, can I have the uh, secret key to understanding what you're talking about here, Lord? Uh, because I'm sure that's helpful uh, for some of these parables, right? And so Jesus lays out some phenomenal truths. One, uh, one of the world's most astounding sermons ever to date, right? Idea after idea that shapes and redesigns everything we thought we knew about belief in God, who God is, and how we're supposed to follow. Follow him, right? It's a huge deal. And so now it's the end of the day and Jesus and the Jesus team, right? Jesus and his disciples need to head across the Sea of Galilee, which is kind of really more of a lake. But so you would gather, it's usually a pretty manageable trip, not too bad, uh, especially since half the disciples are fishermen anyway, right? These guys know their way around a lake and some water and a boat, right? And so uh, they spend all their time on the water already. So Mark chapter 4, starting in verse 35, it says this, On that day when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat just as he was, and other boats were with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. Let's pause right there. So this scene is terrifying, right? The wind's so strong that waves are coming up over the edge of the boat and beginning to fill it with water, right? These professional fishermen are beyond the, oh, it happens, no big deal. They have legitimate fears for their lives, right? What the heck is Jesus doing during this time? Well, look at verse 38. And he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him and said to him, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And so I think our first reaction is to be super judgmental of the disciples, right? After all, right, they've seen Jesus do some phenomenal things and they're scared of a little storm. But if you think about it, just like we said already, it must have been some storm. If these guys are fishermen, they've probably seen their share of rough weather. So if this is the kind of storm that causes them to fear for their lives, it must have been pretty awful. And so then again, how often is that us? Right, that, that we've seen God come through in our lives time and time again, yet something comes up we're concerned about, we doubt his ability, or worse, maybe even his love for us. Look at verse 39 with me. Mark 4, 39. It says, And he awoke 
and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. He said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? So a question for you guys this morning. Do you trust God? And before you answer so quickly, think about it for a moment. In the course of your day, are you more concerned about what you want to happen or about what God would want to happen? Are you ever anxious? Do you stress? Do you worry? Are you concerned things won't work or people won't act the way you want it to? And so what God asks of all of us is your trust, all of your faith, to give your whole self over to him. And so the awesome thing about that is that it's not blind, that faith isn't blind. God has shown himself faithful over and over again. So we can have full assurance, comfort, faith, whatever, that our trust in him will not be misplaced. And so he has it under control. And so just like he proved that the storm in the midst of the storm, that even the winds and the waters obey his voice. He is trustworthy if we could only give that trust over to him. And so here in a moment, you're going to tackle this topic with your table groups on Zoom. But before you go, evaluate your life and ask yourself, where's my faith? What's my trust in? Let me pray for you guys. Father, I thank you. I thank you for technology that we're able to still meet, that even in the midst of this pandemic, we're stable, still able to gather as the people of God and to praise your name, to learn more about you, and to draw closer to you. So I pray that for each one of these groups that are about to meet. Father, that you would rest with them. God, that you would bless this, that you, you, you would, uh, God, just have fruit come out of each one of these meetings. We love you, Lord, and are grateful for all you've done in our lives. In your name we pray. Amen.